review annual town meeting results? Yeah, it was a pretty quick town meeting. Um, articles 1 through 14 passed unanimously. There was some discussion of Article 15, which was the uh, holidays bylaw change. Um, and that wound up passing along with the consent articles. And the, I think it was about an hour and five minute town meeting or something. So. Um, and, and comfortable and it sounds like the sound was was good so no the sound was better than good yeah the sound was great we were able to hear and i i can i i can honest i mean what what mike wishman said at the end of the meeting of um is is so very accurate we we have and and sometimes people don't don't it, it we we at times could not over the years, there were times where we somebody got up to the microphone and, and spoke. We did not, we did not hear one word. So and 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 we were all looking at one another to try to understand what was being asked. So what what they did the other night was outstanding. Jeff, if, if you can put 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 it away someplace. I don't know how they did it, but it was fantastic. Right. So we don't do it the same way next year. Yes, please. Crystal, anything? Nothing. I, I wholeheartedly agree. The audio was wonderful. I I would I would say that um, Jeff, just so you, I, I think what I what I heard afterward is that most most people that come and watch on TV they they want they want to. To know that their answers are, their questions are answered, and the and while we always joke that it's really, not, I mean, the board of, the board at at the town meeting, according to town meeting time, is basically window dressing until answers have to have to come about, and people want to understand, and 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 we were able, and I mean that's that's a gold standard. Can can you answer? people's questions accurately and and concisely so that people understand and I thought that we did a good job this year as in past and that, that's a reflection on you doing a good job also so thank you Jeffrey thank you. nice job thank you okay 645 we can we can have a public hearing now okay so we're kind of governed by uh, Whenever we post a time of a public hearing, we have to wait until that time. That's why we've been doing some other stuff. We'd hate for the attorney general to come and throw us in jail. <laughs> or they, or worse yet, I wouldn't mind going to jail sometimes. I don't want to pay the fine. So, um, so that being said, Jeffrey, we have a uh, 6:45 public hearing. Um, and we will now, Nathaniel, what we do now is we put on our, our, our we are the LLC? Local Liquoring, lo local licensing authority. So we, we are now putting on our hat as liquor licensing people. Gotcha. And Jeff, can you go through, do we, we do all the uh, public announcements and everything? Yep, we did all the public announcements. It was published in the recorder. Um, we asked if the Board of Health agent, the fire chief, the police chief, or the building commissioner had any concerns, and they did not have any concerns with the, uh, the change in the liquor license. Okay, so hearing that we're all in compliance with the, our, our procedures for a public hearing, I'd like to call a public hearing to, to uh, order. Jeff, what's the liquor license, license hearing all about? Uh, it depends on what the applicants are here for. In this case, um, it's a change in uh, the managers of the establishment. Um, Ooh, other nice other people can come forward and request a new liquor license if a new restaurant or package store were to open. Um, but but in this instance, um, it, it's a change in management. Okay. Blue Heron? Yes. Yeah. Who wants to talk? I'm your attorney. Do I need to be on the microphone? Or 
There's microphones right up above. Okay, yeah. so there's a, okay. Yeah, my name is Christy Bodine. I'm the attorney for the applicants. Um, this is actually a change of ownership interest, change of LLC managers, and change of liquor license managers. So it's three, three in one transaction. Um, and uh, the application sort of speaks to itself, I think. Um, uh, Nick Reggiano is going to be the uh, majority owner, and uh, Justin Mosher here is going to be the minority owner. Um, Nick's going to be the manager, the proposed manager, uh, for the liquor license. And looks like Barbara and Deborah showed up. Yeah. <laughs> they were the ones that were selling it. So. Um, she, both, of the, both of the gentlemen who are, who are purchasing this and taking it over have extensive experience at the Blue Heron as well as at, in the restaurant liquor license or liquor service fields in general. So um, my question is, do you have any more questions for us? Well, we have boatloads of questions. <laughs> so, so Nathaniel, just one of, one of the things about a liquor license, although we are the like in, like, local License authority, everything we do is then reviewed by Boston. Okay. Um, and in Boston, so we could say yes, and Boston could say no. Good. Yeah. It wouldn't be the first time. Um, so, so they they the guy the people sitting in front of us, um, we may think they're people of good character, um, which is a requirement of a liquor license in this state. You have to have be. I don't know how the previous license holders got that, <laughs> but uh, they did. We did. They did. Um, but so so ba basically, if we vote, we vote to to continue the process, um, and everything gets put together and goes to Boston for their review. And, and they may come back in a month or two or so with with an answer. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks for explaining that. They, they're actually running pretty, pretty quick because they're doing about four to six weeks right now. Wow. So, wow. yeah, they're sped up a lot. It's, they, they work down their back off pretty well. They do a lot of well, I, 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 you know, for, for one of the things that they, we talked about recreating local government, um, they're, they're, I mean, and this happens over the last eight or nine, ten years, whatever it's been. But there was, quite, you know, reasons, and, and there was some. One of the things was, was how long it took sometimes to get responses from Boston, especially if you're from out here. It seemed like we we put something in and it went into a black hole and never came. We never heard what happened, but it it comes back much much quicker now, I guess. So. Uh, would you like, guys like to introduce yourselves? Sure. I'm Justin Mosier. Um, I'm the executive chef at the Blue Iron. I have been for the last six years, and I have been with Deborah for collectively about 16, no, 17, 16, 17 years. I um, worked at the old Blue Iron. <laughs> yes. I left for six years and came back. I did three years in Boston, three years in New York City. Um, I was her sous chef for eight years before I left, and I came back as chef cuisine and then got promoted to executive chef. And I mean, we've pretty much, we've built all the menus together pretty much for the last umpteen years. And she was at my wedding. She's like my second mother. <laughs> it was funny, the first time I met Barbara and Deb, it was through an attorney, Mr. Kahn, back then. Yes, and we were, it was. And we were negotiating the sale of the building. Yeah. And we were. We were. It was. Um, it seems like a long time ago now. <laughs> oh, it just seems like yesterday. <laughs> uh, Not um, after these COVID years, <laughs> right? Yeah, I know. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. I'm Nick Ruggiano. I will be Justin's partner at the Blue Heron. Um, I was chef de cuisine at the original Blue Heron at the Book Mill many, many years ago. Justin and I have cooked together extensively um, in Massachusetts, Utah. Um, we've hopped around a bunch and uh, we've worked in some pretty high-end places together and met when we were just kids. Justin's father actually was the man who took me into the kitchen initially and started teaching me at 16 years old. 
how to be a chef. And, and, you, still uh, and you still talk to him? Yeah, I, I don't talk to him too much, but I talk to him quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, I got out of the restaurant business back in, what was that? When you closed? 2004. 2004. Um, when when the old building lease agreement was terminated, I got into a different field. I got into the HVAC business and was an installer and service person for the majority of that time. And in the past seven years, I've been doing commercial and residential sales for HVAC. Um, when Deborah and Barbara approached us about this opportunity, I jumped at it because it's like a dream come true for Justin and I to be together in that capacity. We've talked about it since we were kids, so we're really looking forward to it. Not only working together, but also to continue the legacy that Deborah and Barbara have created in the community with the Blue Heron and what they've done for the community. We want to continue that and elevate it. Okay. This is my wife, Carrie. <laughs> and you think he's nuts, right? <laughs> Yes, you do. <laughs> Admit it, you think he's nuts. Okay, Nathaniel, any questions? Uh, no questions, just want to say you guys are geniuses. The food there is amazing, so please keep doing that. And I look forward to coming and sampling it under your management. Excellent. Thank you very much. Crystal? I'm all set, thank you. And I'll just say, uh, Tom's kind of a barbecue king, so he knows a little bit about smoke. <laughs> you might want to have a cook off with him somewhere. Okay. Or we used to talk about maybe doing some benefits together too. I think that would be a wonderful idea. I my team needs to practice. There you go. Our team is called Smoke You. Smoke You. Smoke You. Smoke you. I love it. I love it. Matter of fact, I'm going to a uh, class in Georgia in September. Wow. Well, you never learn enough, can you, about cooking? It's all about consistency. Absolutely, one hundred percent true. Absolutely, that's why we have the clientele that comes back. All about. I I thought it was amazing. I remember I, I asked Barbara one time, about how do you teach your people how to recreate what your food? Because I think it's amazing because it doesn't. And and she told me I thought that was amazing how you you go through the recipe with them and show them the recipe and then. And you teach them what it's supposed to taste, and then they can are supposed to be able to recreate that from their taste memory. It's, yes. it's all about the taste. Absolutely. And and I I just think that's I just thought that was amazing. I, and it's not about it's not about the recipe. It's about the taste. I just think that's and it's true. It's true. It's very hundred percent true. You know, ingredients are never the same. You know, salt. One salt can be saltier than the other, but, you know, on and on and on. So, depending on the time of the year when you get your herbs and everything, so it's, you have to know what the taste is. And, and if I you don't, it's, you know, get out of the kitchen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I know one time on an anniversary, we went, my wife and I went to the, uh, the Blue Heron, and my wife's not a large steak eater. And the ribeye looked very appetizing, and she uh, she was going to order her ribeye well done. <coughs> and and I kind of cringed. Um, <laughs> and the waiter hesitated a second, and, and my wife said, "Well, how would you recommend it?" And he said, "Rare, but for you, medium rare." And, <laughs> And she's medium rare, and and he says if you really want to enjoy the beef, that's how I would recommend that would be done. And, and and if you order medium and you don't, if we can fix it for you, and that was a secret, the fixing it part. And she no longer has her beef well done. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> which is good for me because now I <laughs> I don't have to cook. <laughs> oh, okay. So we'll do it. Oh Still sure. Do the same gig? Oh yeah. Okay. So I, I just um, congratulations, Thank Jeffrey. You. What else do we have to? Uh, is there any questions you want to ask? No. No. Um, Barbara and Deb, you've been wonderful Thank all you. these years. I, I, 
entering the part our partnership because the town entered a partnership with the, the blue heron 20 plus years ago and, and i don't care what you know and there was there was tiffs and the building and the work that you've done and not only the but the, the your legacy thank you I mean, you you have always, always, always been a strong supporter in the communities, um, to a lot of different, a lot of different organizations, um, and and you brought fame to Sunderland in many different ways through your through your restaurant. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So what else we need to do? Uh, is there any other official stuff that you need to ask them? No, no, I think just the vote. Okay. And I just want to say it's, it's been our pleasure. Yes. So, and, and we are, we couldn't ask a better situation than to leave it with Nick and Justin. I mean, I, we've known them for, you know, 20 years almost, um, more than that. And, yeah. you know, when you build a legacy, you. You want to see that kept, and you know people don't always get that opportunity. So this is a real, a real gift to us, to them, and to the community. Well, we're very happy that it's just going to carry on, yeah. and uh, you know uh, I think there'll be some new um, innovations, and I think that'll be great because we're on this end and they're on this <laughs> end, which is great <laughs> for us. Yeah. We're looking forward to going to dinner at the movie. Yes. Yeah, you can sit on the other side of the. You can sit on the other side of the bar now. Much, it's much more comfortable on the other side of the bar. I agree. All right, so uh, you hired this high fancy uh, attorney. Do you have any legalese you want to spread? No, other than I guess you probably know that when you vote, you need to vote all of the things that we're asking for from the That's all. All right, so. Without so, hearing any other more comments from the room or the board, Jeff, at this time, I'm going to uh, make a motion to uh, close the hearing. Seconded. We have a motion made and seconded to close the hearing. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Can't, now you can't say anything more. It's declared unanimous. Now the... Uh, now, now is when we uh, discuss. Do you have any concerns? No. Nope. Okay, without hearing any concerns, we'll uh, progress to the voting. Jeff, do you have a list of uh, motions if you want? Um, it can be a single motion, right? It can be a single motion uh, to approve uh, the application for blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah. To approve the application for the change of ownership interest, change of LLC managers, and change of liquor license manager for uh, the Blue Heron Restaurant, located at 112 North Main Street, Sunderland, Massachusetts. Uh, subject to approval by the uh, Alcohol Control Board, ABCC. ABCC? Yep. Okay. I make a motion. I seconded. And motion made and seconded to, uh, to grant the uh, request offered by the, uh, the Blue Heron. Contingent upon A, B, C, C approval. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeffrey, three zero, please. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Looking you. forward Thank to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> so when everything goes through and you guys are ready, um, you can come back and we have offers for all our new businesses in town. We have Okay.
So we're done with all new business, right? We'll see you guys around. Absolutely. Take care. Thank you very much. Okay. We're done with all the new business, right? Yeah, I think we're up to old business now. Thanks again. Have a great one. We'll see you soon. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Well, that was different. Usually, people there's very seldom tears of joy. I mean, tears. There's tears, but never very often not tears of joy. So that's good. Jeffrey. All right. Next up, Jeff. We're going to talk about mosquito mosquito spraying opt outs. What do you want to talk about? Uh, I just uh, so if people recall, last year we went through the opt out process or application process and um, the application was not successful um, the letter we got said it was because we were in a moderate risk region mm -hmm. um, so that that was not something that was known to us ahead of time anyway uh, the the applications are due again for uh, opting out of spraying they're due May 27th, so I just wanted to introduce the topic and give a little bit of information and then recommend that at the next select board meeting on the 23rd, um, we decide whether or not to apply and I'll have application material prepared, but um, wanted to just talk quickly about the process. There has to be a meeting of the select board and take a vote either to opt out of all spraying or um, just aerial spraying. Um, and the meeting needs to include a presentation of the alternative mosquito management plan, which interestingly has been slimmed down a little bit. Basically they said you need to do, pick at least three of these things on the list we gave you. And um, looking at it, there are some things we can do um, some things we can't, uh, social media accounts, the town doesn't have any, so we can't do social media, but it's basically education and outreach. Um, and again, I'll have a more detailed plan, but, um, includes things like development and distribution of brochures, uh, presentations, um, information on the website, uh, school-based programs, media outreach, mailings. Um, so you have to pick at least three of those, present it at the meeting, there needs to be opportunity for public comment and discussion at the meeting, um, there needs to be information that the Board of Health was consulted, I've already uh, spoken with the Board of Health and they are also, I believe they're also meeting the 23rd and they would uh, come here to this meeting to, to share their input as well. Um, and then again, whether or not the vote was to opt out of all spraying or um, just certain types of spraying. So we have to do that by the 27th, send everything in, uh, and then they would let us know if we've been successful. And this year we did check the map and Sunderland is a low risk community. So we should have a good chance assuming that they're okay with our plan. So it actually changed from last year's map it did. Uh, I don't think the map changed. <laughs> I think that um, that they recognize that just because we're next to some moderate risk communities doesn't necessarily mean we are mo at moderate okay. risk. And um, I think the fact that the town joined the uh, Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, um, and they found no evidence of any uh, mosquito-borne illnesses in Sunderland last year was probably helpful yeah. as well. Yeah. So, so the biggest thing to <laughs> understand also, Nathaniel, is that even if you opt out of the mosquito, it doesn't ma it doesn't mean that if something happens that you can't get the state to spray, right? Right. 
and hopefully what we're thinking is by being members of the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control Board and having having um, data to support what we're doing. If we did find, if there did, if we did have a problem, we instead of just spraying the entire town, we'd be we'd be better in a better position to pinpoint the application of where it needs to be, where spraying needs to be done, mm -hmm. or or remedial efforts could be better defined, areas could be better defined. Um, at least that's our hope, but we could still peti petition the state for that assistance. Just to clarify, is this something that is no cost to town? It's, it's covered by Massachusetts either way, or is there something that if they do spray, we are on the hook for part of that bill? Um, they, I, I think that they pay for it. I don't okay. think they would spray and then bill us for it. Okay. Um, perhaps if we asked for assistance, it might be different. Um, but I, I'm not sure. Um, and it's also worth noting that if the application is denied or we choose not to apply to opt out, that they wouldn't just come and spray whenever they feel like it. Um, deep, the Department of Public Health would have to issue a certificate of a public health hazard in our particular area. Um, and they would notify us so that we could tell people that it was happening. So it's not like you'd see an airplane or a helicopter going over with chemtrails and <laughs> that's how you get notified. Um, th there is a process, so. Great, thank you. So that's, uh, I just wanted to sort of introduce the topic and say more will be coming at the next meeting and, and the select board and board of health will get my, uh, proposed alternative management plan um, with enough time to review and give me feedback on, on anything you want changed or improved. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, ARPA discussion? Yep. So um, at town meeting, there were three warrant articles that were withdrawn um, with the idea that they would, uh, we would use ARPA funds for those projects. Um, one is $5,000 to continue our membership with the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. Do you want me to stop after each one or? Okay, uh, the second one is the Senior Center Needs Assessment Phase Two. Um, that's 3,000, I believe it's $3,750, we don't have um, an official estimate yet for the phase two. So if we want to hold on that or just giving you a heads up that if you approve 3,750, it, it might increase. I think they thought it was going to be between 15,000 and 25,000. And this is based on the original $15,000 number that, um, so we would be paying a quarter of that, which is 3,750. Um, and then $34,000 for uh, retirement sick time buyback at the Sunderland Elementary School. Okay, Jeff, I, I'd recommend that we we table the Senior Center Needs Assessment until you have a, a accurate number. Okay, because I mean, I, I'd hate to come back for $5, you know, so let's, let's do it once. Um, so let's, the, the 5,000 is basically the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. Last year we joined, we were able to be part of it for 3,000. They have a pretty standard, they have a pretty standard fee of $5,000. Um, we told them we'd try it, you know, try it for one year. If we, we felt that it was uh, beneficial to the town, we'd look at for the full 5,000 also. So I'd. I I think it puts us a bit of, in a in a better position knowing that we have factual information to back up what we're doing versus not and mm -hmm. it, and it's kind of cheap money I think cheap money um, so I I I would I would think that we should continue with that um, and S 
son in elementary school retirement, sick buyback. It appears that we're going to see this coming back. And I, that's one of the things that we should be talking with the, uh, the schools about that also and, and how to, how to uh, include that in our budget, their budget, budget, how to best move forward with that. And what was the dollar amount on the retirement sick buyback again? Uh, thirty-four thousand. Thirty-four thousand. Okay, thank you. So, so what happens, Nathaniel? Is that right? It's members, of the the school teachers union are able to uh, accumulate sick time, vacation time, and there's a at the end if they decide to retire, there's a a decision can they can cash that those time in. I don't know what the, they, they buy back sick time at a hundred percent. I think up to a certain number of hours. Okay. But this is also a limited years left to do this. This isn't ongoing, right? It uh, appears. I think it was eliminated in the last contract. Right. A year ago. So yes, it is being phased out, but it'll Correct. take a while to see that. Right. We won't see it today or tomorrow, but at some point, this charge or this dollar amount will go away for us. So, okay. So, so these had been identified as ARPA money because of the one reason was because of the hundred and three thousand dollar. Free cash. Free cash that we have to use that we really don't use, but we have to. We have to. We have to put Keep it on paper <laughs> because we had already raised and appropriated it the year before. Right. So the hundred three thousand, it it was something that the past accounting service didn't. Yeah, it wasn't reported correctly on our tax rate recap in the fall. Um, so the state thought we were doing something. Uh, we thought we were doing it one way. They thought we were doing it another. They said, you have a negative balance, and we're going to keep whacking you with this negative balance unless you close it. So. Gotcha. We had to use so it's a paper thing. Mm -hmm. it, it's just like sometimes you when when you it used to be when like if your police cruiser was in an accident, it could be replaced a hundred percent with insurance money. It used to be they changed that. It could be, but you still have to go to a town meeting to appropriate the value of the um, cruiser. So we would. Back, let's say it was thirty-four thousand dollars. We would we'd have to appropriate thirty-four thousand dollars, although the insurance company was going to be giving us thirty-four thousand. But you couldn't use the insurance money. Couldn't claim the insurance money because you didn't. It yeah. wasn't in your one was income, cash. one was expenses, yeah. and they. they I mean, they have changed. They have changed that, but but again, sometimes our our state, the accounting system is what they call a uh, cash-based system. Okay, so. You, your books have your books have to equal zero at the end of the year, yep. and and we can't we can't carry a deficit. So basically, the money had already been appropriated. The money had been gathered. We do have it, but we just had on paper we had to say that we we're using one hundred and three thousand dollars of free cash, but we'll get that back next year. So okay. that's why we were using the ARPA back, the ARPA money for these for okay. these items. That makes sense. Okay, so I would I would entertain a motion for the Pioneer Valley Mosquito five thousand and the SES Retirement Sick Buyback thirty four thousand. I'd entertain a motion on those. I motion for the Mosquito District and the SES Retirement Buyback. Seconded. We have a motion made and just seconded on the use of ARPA. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion. All those in favor of the use of ARPA as motioned. Signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. So on the senior center needs assessment. Yep. I know Jeff just said that that has recently changed. 
that dollar amount or was that always yep. the dollar amount and we just didn't know that it could go as high as 25,000? So when the senior center presented their budget to the board of oversight, they had $15,000 in the budget for this phase two assessment. So that's mm -hmm. what I based it off of. Yeah. Subsequently, there were some emails saying, yeah, we, we don't actually have an estimate yet. So this is what we thought it was going to be, but it could, you know, everything's getting more expensive. Right. Now it could be higher. But that's a, that's a pretty big difference. 15,000 to potentially 25,000. Yep. Um, yeah. And I, at this point, I don't believe that they've gone out to find somebody to, to do the analysis. I don't know if they're planning on uh, UMass, uh, Boston. not Donahue Institute, yeah, the Gen, 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 it's not Gentry Act, the study of elderly people, yeah. <laughs> whatever that is, school at UMass did the survey. I think they would be doing the analysis too. Um, but yeah, we, uh, yeah, so I, I think that they just wanted to put it out there that it might be more, but we don't know yet, so. Okay, anything else? Hey, Jeffrey. Um, <coughs> let's see. Select board updates. I got nothing quiet now this time of year. It's nice. Nathaniel? I got nothing. I uh, just want to remind everybody that as of today, we're going to still be able to have our Memorial Day parade. Yes. So that'll be Friday evening. 27th? 27th. May 27th. So please make your... Uh, Please make your uh, mark your calendars, so that'll be the first time in four years or so. It'll be my first parade, yeah. Yeah, we we've had ceremonies at the cemetery, but it'll be the first time in a few years that we'll be able to actually march downtown and and bring everybody together. So it's that's a good thing. Um, like that. Welcome, Nathaniel, to uh, to the board. He um, he's getting his feet wet. It's kind of uh, overwhelming the first couple oh, of meetings. Oh, but it's good to start right when you're at the every other week phase. Oh, you like that? Well, I didn't start with the every other week, but I started. We were still at every week, so. Much easier to ease into it. a lot with... more time between meetings to be able to read and figure things out. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I, and again, I like to thank David, David, uh, for his service. It, it's, um, it's a rewarding, it's very, it is very rewarding. Um, but David was not a Monday night select board member, and it's important that. He he was very vested. He was very very vested in the in the in the in the job as a as a select board member. He took it seriously. You know, we take it serious. There's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of reading. There's a lot of background information that has to be gathered. And and David was always willing to put that time and effort into it. So David, thank you very much. Town administrator updates. Um, just. Two things. Um, one is a follow up on your meeting last week at the school. Um, there was discussion about improvements to the oil tank to better monitor it and protect in case there is a, a spill to help contain it. Um, we got some more information from the schools. Um, and probably for the next ARPA discussion in two weeks, um, if you'll be ready to vote. But I just wanted to, again, broach the topic. They're looking at $9,000 for the tank monitor, 
uh, $3,000 for spill protection and $10,000 uh, to engineer a plan for an above ground tank. That would be phase one with the ultimate goal of replacing the current underground 10,000 gallon tank with a new above ground tank. And they have um, a phase two that, that is significantly more expensive, um, including the purchase of the above ground tank uh, and removal of the underground tank. Um, but obviously that would happen after the engineering study is done. So phase one would be about $22,000. Um, they also did some te some cathodic, cathodic, cathodic testing protection. that yeah. um, in the winter revealed that there might have been some degradation and they wanted to retest it in the spring because I guess you might get different results. So um, they said if it fails again, there might be uh, additional cathodic protection, which would cost $20,000. Um, so once we have those results, I will let you know. Uh, and then the other thing that I was going to, I said there were two things, right? Yep. Um, oh, the, uh, we're working on the presentation of the senior center needs assessment phase one, and it's looking, the last date I heard was, um, May 26th in the evening at frontier. So once that's confirmed, it'll be on our website. Thursday. This is a Thursday, right? I believe it. Yes. Yep. That is the date. Yep. So, um, we will get that information out as well. <coughs> and 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 again, um, though it it, we would hope that if there's if you're interested in the senior center that you would attend. Yeah. Right. The more input, the more input you, the more input that we have, the better. The senior center had been not having um, in-person uh, activities last week. They reopened today, right? Yeah. And they're recommending masks to be worn right now, I yep. believe. Yep, indoors, yep. Indoors, so there are more indoor activities. Um, I, I think part of the assessment I, I think it's important. I, again, I think it's important that we talk about the assessment, and 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 the board of oversight has been talking about it in particular about that we ha actually have a. I don't, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. Don't we don't have any other way? I don't see a building getting built in the next year or two. So it may, and so we actually have to have a very honest discussion about where the senior center goes and not and 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 we can't put we can't put artificial restrictions on what this where the assessment goes the assessment has to be open and there has to be a discussion and and I think that's and and what to tell you the truth the the best people that can answer that question are the people that presently use that will use in the future, and 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 if if you're not using the probably just as importantly, if you're not using a center seat senior now sen senior center now, why aren't you using the senior center is important as well, and what program, and and again I I mean we all may have what we'd like to see in it some some are some we can work on some we can't but we have to be we actually but we should have that discussion you know and if everybody wants a pool table in the senior center we should try to work at having a pool does your mom want a pool table in the senior center i'm pretty sure my mom's not a big pool player okay uh, ping pong <laughs> I, I just want to emphasize another group that you said, which is um, people who may be using it in the future. I mean, the goal here is 
to design senior center programming in space for you know the next 10 years. 15, so while you years. might not be ready to be using it now, if you think you might want to, this is a good chance to influence it so that there is programming and space available for what you want to do when you're ready to. Well, I think we are in a unique because our Sunderland has senior housing. Did, did, that's going to start filling up in September, hopefully, hopefully. right? That's the and goal. there's going to be 33 units that, so, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, and, and we have to ensure that their, their opinions, and we have to look at transportation too. You know, how, 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 we get, how do we get our seniors from here to the, to the center, senior center, wherever it, so, and, and I, would, I would hope that's part of the conversation as well. You know, do, do we put, you know, are we, are we getting a, a bus or a van or how, how, do we, how do we make that arrangement so that we, you know, can support our, you know, the seniors as well, so. And, just, and I think just as important about next 10, using 10 or 15 years, is the people that could use it now that don't. I mean, yeah. this is your time, this is an opportunity for you to tell us why, you know. And, and maybe, maybe, or maybe, maybe it will, maybe it won't be able to affect you, but it'll be able to affect the people down the road also. So those are important concepts. Anything else? No. Anything else? Nathaniel, I'm good. All right, without hearing any additional business to be attended to, our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, May 23rd. 23rd, 6.30. Motion we adjourn. I have a motion. Seconded. I have a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Without hearing any discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff. Call us out at seven twenty-eight.